this indigenous land! I have a story, uh, a very important story to tell you about, I don't want to say, it's, it's kind of a two-part story. There's the part about the homeless situation, the housing and affordability crisis we're facing here in Canada. It's also about campers who are actually traditionally camping and trying to improve their lives living on the land, living off the land, especially the indigenous culture here in Canada. The crisis is so urgent that we need to be trying trying as many different things as we can. I think that there there is a potential for this to make lives better. There's a, a huge disconnect between the government, the province, the city, the campers, the homeless. There, there's just a huge disconnect, massive problem. Police Chief McPhee says it's difficult to make encampments throughout the city safe. If we can actually put them into where there is bed space available and we can actually make those spaces safe, it's a lot easier to make something in place safe by putting the right security and the right people in there than it is to try to make 1,500 tents scattered around the city safe. I've never seen any city personally like this it was it was it's so bad the drugs and the homelessness it was just insane right well once i deep went deep and dove in to the problem and, and and started talking to people in the streets and seeing what the province and the police are doing. Police plan to clear out about 135 structures across eight locations starting Monday. Social service agencies got an email from EPS outlining the plan. Oil Street's Jordan Reiniger says he's never heard of a sweep of this magnitude. This approach of mass dislocation of this many people the week before the holidays is not only cruel, I think it's uh, counterproductive. It It really, really opened my eyes. Really, really opened my eyes. When, I, when we first started this documentary, we were under the same assumptions that probably most of you were, that the drugs and the crime and the, 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 the just all these bad things happening around the drug problem and the homeless problem Most most cases, most cases are pretty terrible, right? They're, it's just terrible. I don't know how else to say it. Most cases, yes, there there are drugs, substances involved, but we have to remember that doctors, lawyers, engineers all do drugs. They all drink. Most of them are functioning addicts. So. To blame this problem on, on substance abuse is just wrong. It's, it's not the right way to classify this. This isn't the place for them to be. It was deserted on Roland Road Tuesday afternoon as snow fell and temperatures dipped. And after Monday's court decision, it's now only a matter of time before camps like this one are dismantled. These aren't safe and we need to do something and doing nothing is not okay. 
Police will start taking down eight high-risk encampments in the coming days, but the court said anyone removing the encampments had to follow a number of specific steps. Everything is so expensive now in, in this country. It, it, it's, 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 it's insane. You add that with the, tw with the previous two decades, three decades of them shipping all our jobs overseas or, or to South America, right? Now, now we, we become a society that is no longer a society, a country that builds things. We're a country that is full of consumers. We don't actually build anything here anymore. And, and I do think that is going to change, but it's going to take time. The direct result of, of housing costs, no jobs, and um, just over affordability overall is a, is a direct cause of, of this homeless problem. Now, homelessness has also now become a business itself. So there's people profiting off of this, this dilemma, this crisis. They don't want to fix it. They, they don't even need to fix it. They just need to show small wins. And, and, and it's disgusting. We need to very, very closely examine this problem. This documentary is just breaking the ice, just breaking the tip of the iceberg, like just breaking the ice, just, just, just a little bit. We spent the last four weeks out in the field, about a week before Christmas to now, filming and talking and trying to help you know, bringing water and food and actually even bringing tents and sleeping bags and, and propane and stuff to people. The, the, the governments are so disconnected from the actual people, it's, it's very terrifying. The city of Edmonton has started clearing out homeless encampments in the downtown core it deems high risk. It follows a court battle earlier this month to address how encampments are taken down and an emergency court injunction that briefly postponed the plan to do so. Jason Nixon. The provincial government saying declaring that kind of emergency really has no value and there is no reason for people to be sleeping in encampments in the first place. Jason Nixon is Alberta's provincial minister of seniors, community and social services. It, it, he's shown nothing but ignorance and intolerance in a sense, you know, like he, he's heartless, he's ruthless. They don't know what's going on. Uh, there's an NDP girl, Janice Irwin, and factually, she's the only one I've seen on the ground. And it enlightened me because Jack Layton was the parliamentary member for my, my area in Toronto. And I was there when he was fighting for homelessness, uh, for fighting for the homeless, sorry. And he would be out on the streets day in, day, night, like day in, day out, nighttime, didn't matter. He was there. He was fighting for them. He was holding the government to account. Mr. Chairman, Tent City, here's a little ray of hope. You know, here's a bunch of folks who've who've tried to make a go of it in the, in, in the outdoors because there isn't enough room for single men in the system. The community, and they're here, right here. These are the people who live in Tent City. These are the people. What do we talk about when we use rhetoric? Community development, working with people. That ought to be what we're doing. Let's work with this community as a community to help them in their relocation. And I want to tell you that Home Depot is on board for this. And we do want to move them from a toxic site. Of course, it's not a, an acceptable place for people to be, and we've got to work for a solution. But if they end up on the street, they'll be breathing the fumes of cars and diesels. And that's no better, surely. I've seen a lot of his spirit in this Janice Irwin, actually. She, she really gave me hope that there are still politicians out there willing to be on the ground, be on the streets, and tackle the, the, the core issues our country is facing today. If we could tackle these core issues from the ground up, everybody, everybody will be better off, okay?
This building here was a federal building. We kept saying it should be turned over to affordable housing. They sold it to a hotel. They always said, oh, well, you can't really use it. It's got asbestos in it. Yeah, now it's a hotel. Then the RCMP, which was in that building, they sold that to a hotel. We wanted that to be uh, affordable housing. These are existing federal buildings. People want to be useful, they want jobs, and they want affordable housing, affordable food. Wait, we need to be sheltered, we need to feed ourselves, and we need to keep busy. That's basic human, like, that's life, basic life. All these politicians want to play games. Point the finger, this person, that person. They send the, the police in to deal with the homelessness, right? The police go in to take down encampments and all that. That's not the police's job. That's not the cop's job, okay? That's not for them to do. There shouldn't be a need for security. There shouldn't be a need. Like, the, the violence that I've seen perpetrated by the police in this, it, it's just, it's, it's terrifying. This has been an extremely emotional roller coaster for me. I've, I've spent days, days in front of my computer looking at footage, just bawling my freaking eyes out because this just crushed me. This just crushed me, okay? You know, people burning to death. Uh, you've got gangs, obviously, down there. You've got major health issues. You've got rapid drug use. The city and police are just figuring out which encampment comes down first and when. The real issue here is the fact we have no workers left to build houses and we have no factories to put people to work in. The police come in and they want to say, oh my God, there's drugs, there's crime, there's, se there's trafficking, all this stuff, okay? Where are the stats? There are none because they're just making it up. There, there is definitely crime coming from these encampments and, and this situation, but it's bigger than you think, okay? The arsons, the, the, the windows being broken nine times over, that doesn't come from campers. That comes from citizens trying to take advantage of insurance companies and claim insurance. This is a very disturbing problem we have in Canada right now. This is the last country in the world that should have this problem. Let's look at Finland, okay? They've solved the homeless problem. They have a housing first uh, policy and it's working great. We actually have that too, but nobody is doing anything about it. And this is my problem, okay? We have all these organizations, all these people collecting paychecks off the homeless situation, but nobody is doing anything about it. We, we saw, 10 to 12 camps being taken down and only one yeah, you guys don't had media radio. coverage. No. Only we one had we don't advo advocacy groups supporting them, okay? There's, there's a big question in my mind, why is that? Where are the warriors? Where are the warriors? I'll tell you, I met a few and you're going to get to know them in this video, in this film. You're going to get to see them and what they did and how they stood up and how they were crushed by the powers that be. This story is, is, an, is I hope it will open your eyes as much as it did mine. When Max and I first decided to do a documentary, we were discussing subjects. And I had been speaking on panels this year on the housing and affordability issues in Canada. And as a construction expert, I understand the core issues here, okay? I know what's going on. Nobody's talking about it. No politician is talking about it. We need more politicians on the streets, man. I'm telling you this right now. We need politicians that care and that will take action and hit the streets and talk to people. And this is the biggest issue here. Nobody's talking to the people the problems affect. So when we went out our first day, we didn't know what to do or how to do it even. <laughs> you know what I mean in a sense. 
we, we were going around the, the camps. I had taken notes and um, I knew there was certain homeless camps around certain areas, okay? And so we were, we were traveling between the, 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 the locations. The first few locations we we saw, they were just terrifying, and we were. I was just too scared to approach them, honestly. Uh, my first day out, I was just too scared to approach. So we went around filming, driving down the streets and filming, blah blah blah. We come to a camp just across the street from the police station, police headquarters in Edmonton. We come we come across a camp. I'm like, all right, we got to get out. We got to talk. Uh, so we came out, we met, a, we met a girl, and she was talking to us about how the police are a big problem, okay? The, the government, who's supposed to give them money, don't give them money. They just give it to the police. Like the NDP that was uh, elected here in Edmonton, uh, they ran on defunding the police and helping the homeless. And what, they do, what did they do? They give the budget that, they were trying to, that, that was proposed to uh, solve homelessness and give it towards mental health and addiction services and to the homeless, they give it to the police. No, yeah. they don't do anything to actually help. And that's that's the ridiculous part. And the money that was supposed to be for the, um, like the Bissell and all those, the money that they weren't using or wasn't getting a chance to use went right to the cops. Wow. They literally took the money for the homeless and put it towards the cops. So... You see what I'm saying, okay? Don't be fooled. Yeah. But yeah, like, there's so many things that the city can do, but they just don't want to. They don't want to help. They don't really care. Yeah. And it's, it's not right. But we were, we were in, interrupted by somebody, don't film here, don't film here. And, and he was intimidating and intimidated her. What do we do? They take advantage of the homeless as well. Well, yeah, I know. And this is there. There's definitely a problem there. Okay. We were like, okay, you know what? Let's check out this last camp. Okay. We left this location. You're gonna see all the footage. We're like, all right, let's check out this last location. Okay, this location on 95th Street and 101A Avenue. up to this camp and I'm like first impression this place is neat and tidy what's going on here right so we get out of my car and we start walking around the perimeter and I'm filming we ran into a girl uh, just like tying some stuff doing some stuff outside named Dorothy what's your name Dorothy Dorothy, Dorothy? I'm Chris nice, nice to meet you I'm thank nice. you for talking with us nice to meet you. Thank we're, you. We're, we're gonna, we'll come back <laughs> who we become to know very well, actually. Dorothy is so sweet, such a nice person. We're really trying to just shoot a real true documentary, um, you know, and not frame it like from our own perspective, but from like the your perspective in a sense, right? Yeah, we, we that day saw people coming from the community to drop off donations, we saw people coming to visit. We could we couldn't meet with the big man, right? Yet, because he was just too busy in meeting. Yeah, and this this is a home. This is their home here. So, when Max and I were leaving that day, we we, we decided, okay, well, you know what? We're gonna get the candles. We'll bring the candles. We did. We we came, went back and we dropped them off at her tent, and it, it was just. Peter. Awful. We, we had heard a story. They had just lost somebody, okay? And then wait for a place for her to live. She felt so bad that she didn't want to leave any of us. So she said she was going to go say goodbye to all her friends. I kept her alive. I kept her away from that drug. I kept her busy. She thanked me. Uh, it, it, it was terrible, terrible story. And these people were grieving.
We finally getting to know Big Man, and we're getting to know the, the people in the camp, like Chad and Arlen, May, uh, Dorothy. We found we learned that there was an elder, elder living there as well, who just was living in a tent, just a, wanting to rest. Not drinking, not drew, no drugs, nothing like that. Just normal, everyday elder. She just wanted to sleep in her tent to rest and just chill. And that's what she did. She's just so sweet. And she's a true elder. And that's what she, she just wanted to do. She just wanted to rest. I have to tell you, we're, we're, we are on Treaty 6 territory here in Alberta, in Edmonton, where we're at. And these people were living in a camp off the street, like onto grassland in, in a tree, like grassy area, like at least a, a lot and a half away from any resi other residential unit, okay? We were very impressed. This this next time when we when we when we came to the camp, like I I have to say, okay, we we've been going around and filming all these camps, and they're dirty and dangerous and just like terrifying. Nobody wanted to talk to us. Nobody wanted to talk in front of on camera, and. This camp, right away, we were invited in. And people were willing to talk on camera, willing to tell us their story. And the story is incredible, actually. This is an indigenous healing camp on Treaty 6 territory, on city land, where people who are on drugs can come to detox, okay, and, and, and spend those in critical, intense hours uh, of detox and withdrawal with, with an elder who provides medicine. He says, every time he comes to me and he feels that it's, it's, a, it's, it's a end and he resumes his clothes, he says, all I gotta do is just show up to go see you, big man. And somehow it just gets better for me until the next time I come see you again. In, in, in support and healing. Roy Cardino, this man, is a is a different being. He he was first brought to this camp for security reasons because it was starting to get jumbled up and things were happening. But he went in and cleaned up all the riffraff, kicked them all out, and then it just developed into him being an elder and him helping people to heal. Okay, this was something that just happened naturally. And. Man, it, 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 see, he has an incredible story. And, and throughout this, this documentary, you're going to learn a lot about him. This, this guy is one of the heroes of the story, okay? We went into the tent that day, and I was surprised at how clean it was and how organized it was and how peaceful and amazing it was. It was this wasn't a tent. This is a this was a TP, guys. Like this was literally a TP.
had a stove in the middle that ran on propane heat. And uh, he had put fresh lava rocks in there for us. And we listened to them play the guitar and jam out, man. It was amazing. He was telling us stories about his, you know, his elders and um, his people. And, and just, it was amazing. It was incredible. The, the, the talent that this man, these people, these indigenous brothers and sisters of ours have, it never ceases to amaze me. Because we are homeless doesn't mean that we're not still the same as a hunter would be hunting me. The hunter would come after me. I would find many ways to dodge him or lose him. The animals in the wilderness, the wind, the fire and the earth will give me the comfort I need not to be suspected of anything that they already hunt me for. Believe me, I'm part of this land. I stay here because it takes care of me. I live here because it takes me and fancies me. But if for me to do anything wrong to this land, then you may come if you own it and come and give me a bad day or give me a hard time. But until then, I ain't done nothing wrong to you, so why do you pursue me? We left that day feeling enlightened and hopeful that this camp situation could work. Police work on closing down the final of eight high-risk encampments. They're getting a look at what they're finding. So far, police say 76 people and 120 structures have been removed from seven high-risk encampments. They've also removed 2,000 needles and nearly 200 propane tanks. This afternoon, Edmonton police held a briefing outlining just how risky the camps are for first responders and the people living there. Fires, explosions, drug use, overdoses, violence, weapons, and gang activity are some of the primary concerns. And since removing those seven camps, many have reappeared. What I would like to see um, is we're not going to change encampments the way they currently are, is we create a different expectation about what camping looks like in the city of Edmonton. So we recognize that if people are still going to be camping on the street, you know that they're clean, they're orderly, they clean them up at, at, during the daytime, which we see other jurisdictions have done, and, and we just create a different expectation and don't enable the behavior anymore. Police say there are 750 high-risk homeless camps they respond to within the city and believe it will be an ongoing problem. They're working with several partners to find new ways and incentives to get people living in camps to access services. One person living in an Edmonton encampment died recently from a propane tank explosion. There was also a propane tank explosion with no injuries reported. The city says the explosion and finding the body are not related. The chief says he's heard about gangs controlling access to outdoor city water fountains, charging the homeless to use them. But officers haven't caught anyone doing that just yet. What we've been noticing is the police come in and they tear down a camp and the camp just reappears a couple days later or they just move a block away. It's, it's actually quite ridiculous. The police come in and then basically just steal all their possessions, throw it in the, in, the, in, the, in the garbage and they have to start all over again with a tenth of their stuff, okay? They let them take a handful of, of their belongings and that's it. Everything else goes in the dumpers. Uh, it's quite ruthless, it's quite disturbing, it's quite disgusting, it's quite ignorant. The city says, oh, well, there's shelter space. There's lots of shelter space. Okay, so this is one of the city's temporary housing shelters behind me here where there's, I think, uh, 56 beds where they've put uh, old job site trailers together for the homeless to sleep uh, somewhere, you know, safe and secure at night. I think there's a waiting list of over 300 people to get into this facility. Um, there's another one being built. Uh, it should be open as we speak even. We're going to go check it out right after here. It's not a very safe place. A lot of those shelters. Greg Gladue has been on and off experiencing homelessness for 10 years, always avoiding shelters as much as possible. There's people up all night that are stealing things from you or threatening you. But for the first time in a long time, he feels safe inside a shelter and will be one of the first to call this trailer off Fort Road 
home. An Edmonton nonprofit hopes various forms of shelters like trailers or these pallet houses will change their perception of safety and encourage them to seek shelter this winter. It's not a cot on the floor. It's uh, people are not asked to leave during the day. They can stay 24 seven. This becomes um, like a temporary home for them. The heat was turned on Thursday. Neganan Housing Ventures is now hoping to fill the 54 spots in the coming days, just in time for an expected cold snap and at a time when the city and police are removing several high risk encampments. So as you can see, I am standing at an encampment. This one is meant for women only and I am standing on Fort Road in Belvedere Way. As you can see behind me, we do have the Belvedere LRT station there. And just down the road near the Belvedere LRT station, emergency shelters are being set up in these trailers by another organization to accommodate and support up to 100 homeless women. It's unclear at this time when they will open. If people aren't willing to go to the shelters, that tells me there's a problem with the shelters and not the people. So let's just say they, so the guys were yeah. acting yeah. up and yeah. so they looks like they yeah. might open, they might um, not. And they they might. Open. Okay. These people had a home. They they had their possessions. They were helping each other. They were surviving. They were all well at this time. Okay. when uh, they got the eviction notice. But now an eviction looms as the city and Edmonton police are set to dismantle the encampment. That the police would be coming in 48 hours. We were very concerned. We, uh, these people are good people, okay? They're no different than you or I. They're just, I'm telling you right now, any of us are just literally, and this is not just a meme or a quote. We, any of us could end up on the street, especially nowadays. With, with how expensive everything is, okay? Any of us can land on the street, any of us. And don't kid yourself. Okay, it could be you. When all the money is going to bureaucracy and government and police, what do you expect is going to happen? Edmonton police have designated these encampments as high risk. We saw just a few hours ago the city put out a, a statement saying uh, this is basically to protect the very people who are living in these encampments. What is your response to that? There is no protection again for them. They're basically taking these people, kicking them out of the spot they're in already with the stuff they've gathered to help protect themselves, keep themselves safe. That includes blankets, IDs, you know, uh, maybe some memorabilia of family that they carry with them. This stuff is immediately lost if they can't carry it out in the time frame given. But they're not given a place to go to. There is no shelter space for them to go to. Okay. If they really wanted to help these people, then what they would do is designate land, fence it, and support them, give them a garbage bin, give them a porta potties, help them with water. Temperatures have dropped sharply with lows well into the minus 30s this week. Jim Gurnett is a housing advocate and says that with this extreme weather, many of the people who have been displaced will not be in shelters and will be facing the elements without protection. People are going to be struggling to try to stay warm in, in a much more extreme setting than, than if we had just left them. It's, it's really a nasty thing to do with this weather change. On Thursday, a hearing in an Edmonton court will determine if the Edmonton police can continue dismantling encampments. The community had been coming together, dropping off donations to help feed them, to help clothe them, to help keep them warm. Right? We were helping buy propane. This can't work. 
Cardinal has helped people struggling from addictions. He's grieving his friend Shay, who recently died from an overdose, a day before she could get into housing. Police don't solve homelessness, okay? The cops don't solve homelessness. It's not their job. That is not their job, okay? It's not, and it's not the police's fault for what happened here, okay? It's not their fault. It's the people who sent them there whose fault it is, okay? Because police will be police. The sites can only be dismantled if there is enough shelter space for the people who will be displaced. It may look like just a tent to people, but inside that tent is a home, just like how everybody else has a home. But Meads doesn't want to go to a shelter. Many here don't. She doesn't want to lose all of her things. This, at least, I can have my stuff. I, I still have the same thing that I had a month ago. But more importantly, Meads doesn't want to lose the sense of community here by going to another encampment or a shelter. We helped as much as we could, but I, I'm just telling you, man, if it wasn't just for a couple little tiny things, okay, like, why not? Give them some land and fence up an area, give them porta potties, give them a garbage bin where the city could pick it up weekly. Okay? That would be a solution. These are the trailers causing a stir just off Fort Road in Edmonton's Elmwood Park neighborhood. They're meant to be temporary shelters in this parking lot. They're ruining my neighborhood. I've been here 17 years and they're just trying to they're trying to ruin it. I'm sorry. Robert Anger lives right across the road from the site. He's one of many residents upset, feeling they have no say. They gotta house the homeless, but right, right here, right in front of us. This tearing down camps and kicking them out and trying to get everyone into the system, that, that is not a solution. A lot of these people, 60% of them Indigenous. No one knew the government of Canada was preparing the Indian Act at the same time which said Canada could dictate our lives. No one knew the Northwest Mounted Police was there to push us onto reserves. No one knew the written document said we surrendered the land. Are, are already scarred from the institutions that we've put on, we've, pr we've pressured them into joining. And now what they want to do is they want everyone in, in the institution. They are, you're either in jail or you're in a homeless shelter or in a program or rehab or whatever. These are all government institutions that they want you in. They want The government wants more control. Okay? They, they want to make money off of you. This is disgusting about this. This is the whole thing that's so disgusting is the government wants to make money. Co companies, they want to make money off of these problems. The, the shelters are junk. They're, 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 I don't care what the province says. They'll never turn anyone away. I have proof. I have proof on video that they will turn people away. In fact, an entire shelter refused to open one night because earlier that day, a couple of them were, being, were misbehaving. Not only did they get turned away, We've seen people doing drugs, lighting fires at the front door of this place. Here's, here's my biggest qualm with these services and these people that say they're there to help. Those 48 hours that the, this camp, like the big man camp, we're going to call the big man camp, had to vacate the area not one not one service had come to them to educate them on the services available to them the options they had or even tried to help there's advocates like judith gale and 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 earth for example who are warriors who are out there every day in the trenches trying to help their people they're indigenous brothers and sisters, and I respect them so much. They're trying to make a difference. What sickened me most about this entire thing was the lack of support, actual support. This massive disconnect between bureaucracies, okay? The province isn't updating the city and the... The city isn't being heard. The, the worst part of all is nobody is asking the people on the streets what they want. Nobody is asking them how what they need. 
okay? They're just telling them what they need. They're telling them where to go. They're telling them what to do. When you go to a shelter, okay, your stuff is being stolen. You're, you're being, you're, you're, people are being victimized with violence. They're surrounded by drugs, dirtiness, just craziness, okay? And, and they wonder why nobody, they're blaming the people for not using the shelters. Let's not victimize them and let's not criminalize them. Further marginalize them by saying they're all drug addicts and they just don't want to follow rules and this and that. Let's find out really why and what's going on. And that's the problem, isn't it? Nobody's asking the people on the streets what the problem is. We got all these people in suits in, in, sitting in their warm offices and their warm chambers and talking amongst each other about what they think is the problem or why, you know, labeling these people and criminalizing them, or for, like seriously marginalizing them even further by calling them all rapists and drug addicts and criminals. They're not. They're just get people like you and I in a really bad spot, in a really bad situation. It's the greed in this country is like the festering pus of, of our society. The greed, the business people, the people wearing the suits, they're the pus, they're the problem. They've left the people behind. Everyone's trying to trample each other and make it to the top. That's not Canada. That's not the way it should work. Everybody matters. Everybody's valuable. People need jobs. People need housing. All right? Not be gouged every freaking... Everywhere you look, we're being gouged. They say encampments are a symptom of a shortage of safe, adequate, and affordable housing. The city of Edmonton had declared eight camps high risk and vowed to clear them all out. And their classification for what makes a high risk encampment went from 20 tents to eight tents to six tents, right? So they, they keep moving the goalposts. People are burning down each other's tents out of vengeance and, and, for, and for different grievances, okay? It's very dangerous to be on the streets these days. So what Big Man did in the Big Man camp, being the soldier there to protect them and provide security and then healing, it's so admirable. The Monday came around, okay, everyone was, was thinking that was the day the police were going to come and tear them down and evict them. All right, here we are at the big man's camp. We've been here for almost uh, two weeks, I would say now. Uh, this is probably one of the safest camps we've seen in the city. We've been to all of the other locations and they, uh, you know, the uh, out of all of them, this would be the safest one, I would say. You have uh, proper separation, property separation here. They got, uh, all the other properties are either on the other side of the street or out of the way. So there's no like real fire uh, risk, you know, for the, if there was, say there was a fire, it's not gonna spread to a residential area. There's lots of clearance here. We've also made sure they have fire extinguishers here and uh, water as well. So to help extinguish as well. There, there was a fire here last week, and literally it was cleaned up that day. So, uh, the like, there's no excuses for this to be a, like, I don't know how they deemed it to high risk encampment. We don't know why. Uh, it'd be nice to know. We are going to ask these questions. They were scheduled for clean out this morning, but uh, for some reason uh, they changed it to uh, tomorrow. I uh, was thinking because they couldn't quite get another one done, so they needed more time to do that to come here. Uh, but we were here this morning just in case. Uh, there was some representatives from the NDP party here, um, like uh, Jan. What was her name? Janice. Uh, What's her name? Janice Irwin. Yeah, Janice Irwin was here, and uh, somebody else. Um, and then of course uh, there's some other people protesting. Uh, we're just hanging around just in case something does happen. Don't think it will. We'll be back in the morning as well to uh, document any, if anything does happen. But we're going to have a talk with the big man here and he can explain to you like his process here. But you guys have seen the rule board. If by now in the video you would have seen that we they have rules. Um, it's, uh, you know, it's also a dry cap so they can't do drugs and drink here. Um, you know, it's and it's clean. Like you can tell like that there's no group paraphernalia on the ground. Uh, it's 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 clean you know if the city really just kind of put a little bit of extra effort into into it 
They could put a garbage bin here and pick it up weekly. They could uh, bring water. They could provide porta potties. It's no, there's real no excuse for it. You know, I feel like if they're following following a set set of rules, like uh, being safe and um, you know also making like letting inspections happen and uh, like you know then they, sh they should qualify for services like sanitation, right? Uh, like construction, we can we rent porta potties. It's it's actually pretty cheap. I believe Bissell, because that's they have to tell Bissell, and so if Bissell says no, then right. then I would believe that. But it never hurts to be. What's that? What's that saying? Like trust but verify. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Do you do you know? Do they disclose like the report, like on how they just classify each camp, like Thanks, why they? Doing this, guys. Thank you for the smudge, bro. That was awesome. Oh, of course. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for joining. Make absolutely. Yeah, you yeah, bet. Go good. <laughs> Um, yeah, oh shoot, yeah, do they release that, do you know, or? So, as far as I know, I haven't seen them explain, like, are we talking about, like, how they designate what's dangerous and not well, dangerous? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, like, I think I think that part's pretty okay, so, yeah. they have this flow chart that Yeah, I've seen published. that, and that's what I mean, but it's so... But then it just, like, skips over, it's like, somebody yeah. calls, then they make a designation. Yeah. And then based on that designation, there's like the little flow, but all of it, it ends doesn't make in a, sense. It all ends up in clearing. Exactly. And, and yeah. Never really explain. All the people we've met here are really interesting and unique. They're all they're they're all co contributing to the community and helping out. Um, like they're assigned different different types of roles. There's there's rules. There's things going on here that keep order, right? It's not like it's a lawless. Uh, place where these people are just doing whatever they want okay they're being respectful of the land they're being respectful of the neighbors you know yeah you know it is unfortunate but we we have to say like we need these constant reminders of how bad it is like if, if we just keep shoving the problem away sticking them sticking them up north out of sight out of mind no nothing's ever gonna get better we're just gonna make the problem the worse right um, I think all these neighbors and stuff, they sure they want to call, they called in 9,000 complaints last year on, on these encampments and that's why the city decided to give a $3 million budget to the police department instead of the $4 million budget to the uh, outreach um, centers, you know, because they wanted to hire more peace officers to deal with the problem, right? So uh, it's just a, it's not a, it's not a solution. Uh, getting rid of these camps is like shoveling water, right, as I say. You're not uh, solving any problem. You're just displacing these people, and uh, they're gonna either set up camp down the street or come back, at, you know, eventually, right? Like it's crazy. We, all these camps we've been documenting, literally, they get torn down one day, they're back the next. It's insane, right? We show up um, on the Monday. We knew they weren't being cleared out because we had been there on the weekend. We knew the police had uh, other camps to tear down, so we knew they weren't coming when they said they were. They, they still never reissued a, a warning to them, okay? So that, that same 48-hour notice was still in effect. And they never actually reissued a further warning that they would be coming, you know. My name is Eski, Esquil, also known as Earth Woman. Um, what do I do? Uh, I've been working with a traditional elder for the last eight years. The amount of community support was staggering, okay? It was beautiful. The, the indigenous practices, the ceremonies, the praying, the smudging, everything was so beautiful. It was incredible that the community could come together and support this camp, this one camp. Um, most of the generations, uh, we are the most Ukrainian generations. We are the ones who give life, give birth. We are the first warriors of our children. We will fight to defend our children until the day we die. And uh, I'm always teaching my children to think seven generations ahead. And you teach them to think seven generations ahead. Whatever knowledge I have and have been given, I'm passing to you. And you're going to be passing it on to the next generation. And that's how we're going to keep going. That's how we have kept going these past thousands of years. Everyone was afraid the police were coming the next day. but. We were hopeful because the cold weather protocol Edmonton had put in place was just about to be uh, put in put in effect. Do you think the police cared about that policy? 
Residents of this encampment south of Jasper Avenue huddled around a fire Monday, keeping warm on one of the first of many cold days to come. <laughs> People here were ready to be evicted Monday. The encampment near Roland Road is the eighth and final high-risk encampment the city and police have scheduled to take down. I knew, like, I just felt, I saw so much strength and resilience in, in these people. It was a plan to stand up to the police and protest them and hopefully al allow the big man camp, the camp intends to continue, right? To uh, continue helping and healing people. The city of Edmonton activated its extreme weather response Monday at noon. Tomorrow at 10.30, Ann Stevenson, she's a city council lady. Yeah. She's in charge of the, and represents this area. Oh. Uh, buddy with the blue shorts still in there. He says that uh, he saw her at a coffee shop. They had a really good, real conversation. Really? She, he says it, he feels she has a good heart, but she's not fully informed on what's happening regarding this camp yeah. and this issue at no fault of her own, right? So that's how they do it. They... So she wants to come here tomorrow at 10:30. Gonna, I heard they were gonna take it down. Yeah. Yeah. So she's gonna be here tomorrow at 10:30, and I think he said it would be great to to get her voice in here, yeah, right. right? So we can be prepared for that. Her name is Ann Stevenson. My indigenous brothers and sisters. Okay, I've known them for so long. I I've had. I just. I can't believe the genocide still continues today. Like, seriously, the, 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 where is the compassion, basically, okay, is what I'm trying to say. We need to send in mental health workers, counselors, drug professionals, okay, on top of considering everybody's spiritual beliefs. You cannot be against hate and hate, meaning we have to educate each other. We have to look out for each other. We have to, to, to actually go to the streets and find out the truth with your own eyes. And remember to only believe what half of what you see and nothing, zero of what you hear. Protest day. We have, we have Earth, the first day actually, we actually met Earth. She is so beautiful and amazing and powerful and so strong. And her children, okay, two daughters and a son, beautiful children, amazing. And, and they have, they're so lucky to have a mom like her to bring them out to do charity work and community work because community is where it all begins and where it all starts, everybody, okay? If we do not help our direct communities, the top, the top, okay, is going to be junk, complete shit, okay? We have to focus on our community and the people around us, and we have to help everybody around us and uplift each other. Stop with the hate. Stop with the division, okay? The protest day went really well. No cops showed up. We knew they weren't, okay? They, they were busy cleaning out another camp. There was an injunction put in uh, by the Best Human Rights Advoc Advocacy Lawyer Group Coalition for Human Rights or whatnot. It was put in. It was an injunction. And there's these eight high-risk encampments that they were going to take down. And there's all these rules set. They were Police were just busy tearing down the 7th. And I don't know why they waited for Big Man Camp to be the last and 8th. I don't even know why Big Man Camp was on the list. And nobody has yet to give me an answer why this camp particular was targeted. The suspicion is it was targeted because it was, they were calling out that this is indigenous land, this is an indigenous camp, and they had a right to be there under Treaty 6, and that they were only borrowing the land. They were gonna give it back. They just wanted to borrow it to heal for a bit, and then they would give it back. Nobody was proposing to stay there forever, okay? Key, that is key. We thought that this camp should work. Why not give them this, the, the tools they need to succeed? Why not give them, like, why not fence the area off? It's all like, it's it's all like a park almost, right? And there's no houses around. Why not give them a fence with onion skin and security, porta potties? We could, we could write safe work practices, safe like job procedures type thing, make it safe, have safety inspections. 
right? Provide him with fire extinguishers. Like, I actually brought him a fire extinguisher, you know? Why not give them fire extinguishers, first aid kits, things like that? Water, porta potties. It's not that complicated. It's not that hard to do. It really isn't. And it wouldn't cost that much. It would cost a fraction of what they spend on tearing all these camps down. It, it's just unbelievable. People need their own spots. They need their own land. They need their own piece of like the pie, their own property. Okay. Th this is, a, this can work. People taking care of each other in camps, right? The community is coming to support them, feed them, everything. It's beautiful. It's, it, it can work. I know it can. I'm going to make a stand so that we heard, that we heard and that something can be done about this. But there's not going to be no violence towards anybody in this. There's going to be an understanding. The politicians were saying that the cold weather poli the policy that Edmonton had created was go going to be in effect the next day. Therefore, they, the police technically shouldn't be able to tear down this camp. Okay, we we felt like we won. We got past that deadline that they would be able to stay. But I remember, Matt, we were driving home that night. We were feeling a little uneasy about it. And we're like, you know what? We better go back tomorrow early. Just keep watch. Keep six. See what happens, right? All right, guys. We're here early in the morning. Uh, scheduled for clean out today. Um, we're hoping the city does not come through, fall through with plans to clear them out today. Um, I've seen there's a, a guy parked in a white vehicle here. It could be a police car or a media car. I don't see any other city trucks. Uh, it's scheduled for 9 a.m., but uh, I don't see any vehicles yet. Not, not really. Uh, one police truck up the street there, like undercover, unmarked police truck. Um, a school bus down there and some other big Staples delivery truck. So nothing, nothing crazy yet. Nothing crazy yet. We're praying for them. We're, uh, we're going to be here to uh, support them. And uh, yeah, also to uh, report on what's happening here on the ground. Uh, but yeah, we're hoping that, um, uh, you know, like I'm saying, we're hoping the city does, not, does you know, leaves them alone. There are a lot of other camps out there that are pretty dangerous. So uh, we've come to know the guys in here and uh, yeah, it'd be a darn shame. You know, they're just trying to survive and it's, and it's cold. Like, look, there's the cop right there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, no action around the corner or anything like that. No staging, like, no, I haven't noticed any pre-staging or anything. And there's the cops lining up. There we go, driving in the back way. They're not going to let us parking there is deter them, that's for sure. God damn it, man. Seriously, they don't got anything better to do. But yeah. Oh, not looking good. <coughs> Not looking good so far. Oh. I don't know why the police showed up the next day. I do not know why. It was such a long day full of just, just absolute madness. Big man Roy took a stand. Arlen, Chad, everyone by him, by his side took a stand. He held a sign, rise up warrior, right? Because I'm only going to represent, what, did he, what does he say? I'm an advocate for the people who, oh, oh yeah. He says, I'm an advocate for the good people, not the bad people, right? So when he came to this camp, he came as security and he did that. He cleaned out all the riffraff of this camp, sent them on their way. And he provided security for these people. He, made, he kept the, the, this camp safe from harm there was no organized crime there was no uh trafficking there was a one really bad situation that was awful that was just one okay but to now label every camp that is being controlled by organized crime and sex trafficking and all this stuff it's just not true the first police truck showed up 
my my heart just sunk like literally sunk i didn't i didn't know what to think and i was scared i was just i all of a sudden i just felt just scared i'm like oh no this is this is actually happening they are gonna come and sweep this camp oh i was terrified i was so sad the media started showing up advocates protesters started showing up i'll never forget the times i spent in the in the tp with big man and the people in the tp with big man and having the honor to to record such a great man such a great like just so it's just i was so honored to be a part of this you you can't even imagine you can't even imagine how honored i was and how much respect i had for these people roughing it living it on the street taking care of each other battling the drugs battling the just the evil in society the greed and standing up to it taking a stand there is like I couldn't believe how many cops there were. There were so many police there that day. A lot happened the first day. The camp was supposed to be torn down. There was all these city dump trucks and police officers, and they're all going through the camp, and just like it was so threatening. It was just like the man, the government, the man, just coming in on you like this, like the army almost, you know, just coming in on you like full force. And it was so intimidating. It was so frustrating. Like. Me being me, knowing that we had no chance against the police, right? Like, I was just terrified. I was so terrified. I was shitting my pants all day. The first cops that showed up, I went up and I'm like, Okay, we're we're just we're a documentary film crew here. We're filming everything. We're we're not here to victimize anybody. We just want to capture the truth and see what's going on. Okay, we want to capture the truth. That's it. Okay, we're not going to get in anyone's way. You tell us to get out, whatever. You will do it. Just 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 to consider us a uh, non-threat. We're here to document everything. Okay, that's what I said. And the cop was like, "Yeah, that's great. That's awesome. No problem." A uh, big man came out of the tent and he's like, I have nothing to hide. If you guys want to look in any tent you want, look, we have nothing to hide here, okay? It was, but I'm not leaving. I'm I'm making my stand. I'm sick of being moved around. We're, we're, we're taking our stand now. Big man stood up. Right on, guys. Let's show him. Good morning. Nobody man. move. Stand your ground. Okay. What's happening? No, but we'll make it peaceful as we can. Everybody stand ground. Is anybody else in that one? Tent no, the most majority of them are just stop. We call stewards. Okay. I don't want nobody to move. I'm not moving. Until anybody you knows what they say and I say. Standing I'm standing ground for you guys and I'm going to stand today. Peaceful as all it is. You can't move us with any violence. I hope not, anyways. No disrespect, guys, but I do have a family and everything here. You got them all? How many more came? Chris is up there with the camera. Okay. I'm hoping more show up. Just tell me, Chris. Morning. Morning. Do you mind if this much too Okay, how you doing? Hi, hi. And the police officers of Edmonton are fine duty officers. They do their job when they want to. In a cold like this, they know how to sweep us under the rug. So listen to me, everybody, please. Stand your ground. You show nothing but respect and dignity to them. Let's see if they give us back the same thing. Some of them can be very, very hostile, I'll tell you. I'm not going to lie. The neighbors, there was a bunch of different neighbors that came out in support of this camp. And one little girl, I'll never forget, like, what a warrior. What a little warrior and so smart. Kids are smart, you know? 
the they see it as it is. It's just amazing. This kid is amazing. We're gonna stand your ground. We're gonna sit. I want to talk with somebody. I'm refusing to move. I've been here for a while. I just brought him in. You can't charge me for being where I'm at. You can talk to somebody. You negotiate this, but I'm not gonna do this to people anymore. I'm standing my ground. I got an old lady over there. If you guys want to carry her out and give her some place to live, I'm I'm, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. If you give her some place to live. Yeah. And you can do the same for me too. But I'm gonna stand my ground, boss. I'm sorry, man. Fed up. This is this is stupid. You you shift everybody else around for what? Just to go camp next three, three, five feet yards away from where you are? I said, this is stupid, man. Like, God, poor Destin, what? Less than five days. That's right, we're neighbors. Thank you, sweetie. We're going to stand the ground. If anyone needs a transport or, or shelter space or anything like that, we've got it covered. We've got it. You have transport, it's right there. You guys get in and go home. You must be till this cold is over. Do you guys live around here? here? We've got folks from um, our crisis conversion team here ready to come and explain to me what, 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 what they can explain for me to get up and I'll leave. If it's something dangerous here that I'm standing on right here, I'll get off of it. I really will. I promise you I will. They've been here longer than we have bought our house down there. We've never had an issue. Uh, that needs to go or needs support or need anything you like, identify them to me and I'll make sure that they get those supports. Here's my identification right here, my people. I'm okay, saying so right here, I'm sorry. Point out the ones that need help. Okay. Right here. I'm sorry, guys. I'm not being an asshole. I've been insisting for a while. I need this. I need to stay where I am. Okay? There's a lot more than you can chat stick than you think it is. Nothing to hide from you. You can look around you. There's nothing here. I'm hiding from you. I'm making my stand. I'm making my stand! What are we doing? We're standing up for our rights! Thank you. So, once again, I'm going to have to reiterate. I really heard you, sir. Thank you. I'm advising you. I got elders here that just want to rest. That's what we do. That's what we've been doing. They've been resting. We've got folks that can help. We've got them in the middle. We're not, we're not, we're not. Tell them, tell them. Okay, so, this is one of the I am not moving. Okay? If it means you guys gotta make us look like fools, and we're not the ones gonna be looking like the fools. This is national TV right now. I guarantee you I'm gonna do the best I can to be cooperative and be very, very polite to you. Okay? I, I don't I just keep I just became homeless. I've been helping them for many years. I'm not gonna do this no more. And as much as you are you're a police officer, I respect the badge you where I do. I've been in the system a long time to know that there's something that's some good. Some good and some bad. Sure. This is not what we're going to do this time. This time I got rights. I got a little bit of an education going here. I'm going to stand. I'm sorry. I'm going to stand. Okay, that's fair. Oh! We're going to start cleaning oh! up the oh! 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 Let me hear all of you. Am I going to stand? Okay, so we are going to start cleaning. So anyone that's not directly involved in the camp, I need you to move up behind the trucks, please. Oh, the nobody truck move. Like, kind of not allowed. Like, seriously not allowed. I did. Have you? This morning. Can I ask you how? We can have that conversation. Like, where? Isn't this public property? We're going to stay here. Well, no, this isn't public property. So why can't I have it here? You're here, I'm here. It seems pretty convenient, but I'm here for a purpose. So am I. This is becoming a work site. A work site for what? To be cleaned up. It's their home, so not yours. Have a talk. They do a great job cleaning up here. This is public land. We're going to stand right here. We don't waste right your time. We're standing right here. We're not moving. No, I do want to talk this to you. This is not your home. home. It's there. No, we're good having the talk we here. We all want to have it. Exactly. That's fair. Let's go over there. No, so these we just are right here. We're just stand right park. here. They're just no, involved in the park. It's our park. We are. park. It's Sorry? our we park. Sorry, live brother. here. I understand. These are our neighbors. They've been here much longer Let than we have. Let them stay here. So what are you doing here? Where do they go? It's minus 31 in two days. Do it Where somewhere the warmer. Where do they go? Where the shelters are. There's shelters, folks. There's destruction and all that. So that's not like sliding on your back. That's more backsliding. It would be more like um, 
We don't belong in shelters. There's a pen over there. Put him in the pen. Shelters aren't a home. It's not even a. So why do you get to make choices for them? Shelters aren't answers. Why do you get to make choices? But then go on strike. Whether I get arrested or not, I'm tired. Enough! I'm standing my ground. I'm an Aboriginal right here from this country, Canada. My right here is before you put your boots on, became officers or any kind of employment against us. It has no right. We have the first right. I'm going to stand my ground right here now. Are you guys with me, my boys? Yes, sir. Because I guess we're making a fuss on people. The city of Edmonton gave us that fire pit, told us to respect the land, and to do it properly, we're doing it properly. It is currently 9-11. So, them coming to take this from us, to take back what they gave us, so who's really the giver and the taker back? We were at a standoff. It was a complete standoff. It was so tense, and everyone was wondering what's going on. There's advocates there, and they're back and forth, back and forth with the cops, and blah 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 and I'm just like oh my god this is gonna this is gonna erupt I was everything was so tense and but when you look at the police at this at the time they were they were actually making phone calls trying to figure out what's going on blah 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 say anything. they gave us this land and told us that we can keep it and forever flourish it and love it and take care of it well they came and move all the city buildings here we didn't complain we didn't complain buildings they knocked down and tunnels they have here, but now they want us to move from one little spot just for the winter to move just to stay here. And then I'll take my people somewhere else. So we must call us the end of the trail. I'm going to sit here until somebody comes and talks to me. And everybody out there, if you hear me, come down. Right now I need every soul that has a heart to come and protect us. And stop let us die. We don't want to die no more. Did you guys cool. read in the paper yesterday too that they were going to say that it wasn't going to be decamped? Well, guess what? That changed after the news. And Big Man went on the news and told everybody on the news that this is indigenous land. Here comes the eagle feather. Sangre. Here comes the eagle feather. Sangre. Oh, fuck yeah. Here we go. I will ask one more time, law enforcement officers, you're here to do your duty, smudge with me, and I'll respect your duty. City of Edmonton workers, come and smudge with me. I was so shocked that the police refused to smudge. I'm calling upon you, the government, to come down here and sit down with me. I'm not educated that well, but I am damn educated enough to understand what you want to do with this land and who you sold it to. Get them down here too. They're not using it right now. I'm, I'm keeping it best as I can. I ain't drunk and I ain't on drugs. I'm real. Just because I woke up a little too late doesn't mean that I'm late for the party. This oh, land is still ours. So all the money you guys spend on these fences and stuff can go to part of your housing. The city trucks are leaving. Hey, segue! That's respectful. So Councilwoman Ann Stevenson came down there was some other people that were there. They all, they, they're like important people anyways. It was like a meeting. And they smudged, they smudged with Roy, they smudged with us. Anyways, so Ann Stevenson comes, Janice Irwin's there. There's some other guys, the guy, like, oh my gosh, I wish I knew everybody, but I don't. And I apologize. I would love to know you. I would love for you to reach out to me and talk to me. I would love to know who you all are. I met so many people there. I don't even, I don't even know half of them. It was crazy. It was just so insane. I didn't expect this documentary to be, to be to blow up like this. I didn't expect so much drama around the situation. Like, I was not expecting this at all. It was just crazy. Anyway, so the councilwoman, Ann Stevenson, and all the important people go into the teepee with uh, Big Man. 
and we wait. We wait. The police are there and in full force. The police are there. Like, why are the cops still there? They, they don't need to be here. Why are the police still here? Why are the city trucks still here? It, it was just cr such a waste, such a crazy waste. We um, waited and we waited and we waited. Okay, the media waited outside. We there they were the earth was running ceremonies and and Judith was like just talking, you know, and and being Judith and being just such a powerful woman and just yeah, Judith is amazing. And then finally the counselors come out. Finally everyone comes out and it's like snowing hard at this time. Okay, like snow falling like mad. Finally, the, the, the politicians come out. Everyone was so happy. Everything seemed so what great. Like, it looked like we come to a deal. Everybody was under the impression that we had come to a deal, that the camp could stay. Big Man did some interviews and with, the, with the media. And, uh, yeah, I, I seen some compassion off camera with the with a certain police officer and presenting Big Man with some gloves and stuff like that, which was really beautiful. I'm making my stand! Roy Cardinal has made this encampment on 95th Street and Roland Road his home. Holding a sign that says, Rise Up Warrior, he is telling police he won't be going anywhere. I'm not moving. Edmonton police and city crews arrive to take down the tents and get people living here out. But if it comes down to it, then I'm just going to sit still. We have rights in this city. We have rights in Canada. Residents and advocates stood their ground. It delayed crews from cleaning up the site. Where do they go? It's minus 31 in two days. You Where, the are warmer. Where do they go? Where the shelters are? There's shelters, folks. Three day There's waiting list. Here. There's people that are here ready to help out. I did this for nothing. I did this for a reason. That's why all these other people are here. I can remember the time when I the people that take it under their own wing to act like they own it and make trouble for others. Well, I've been on both sides of the street, <coughs> and I gotta say, I feel so sorry for the person I used to be, but the person I am, it never changed. I just didn't know what to do and what side to be on. And now all of you are listening to me. Be there for them. Lock it off. Just because they're not themselves right now. And they're lost. <coughs> Both of them are Get them out of here. Bring them back to themselves. As everybody would say, Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! <coughs> you guys are afraid to walk in certain areas? Make sure you don't have to be afraid no more. Tell them to wake up, pick them up, help them. And if they can't help them, they won't bother you. They'll go away. We always do. Better to be a friend and a good, good person of a heart as anybody else has one and help them take time. The creator will give you tenfold. So everybody, let's say, wake up together. It'll be hard. Wake up! Wake up! Wake up! Whatever this comes out to be on my end, I'll take the chance to ask the I did it for them to be heard. And the talk we had in there, guess what? Something's going to come about. It may take a little time, but when it does, that day I'll lay the single feather down to say it's time for it to have a rest. Until then, I'm speaking traditional for one reason. You don't want to hear no goddamn fancy gas talk, man, because I ain't into that. Words are not it meant to be that way. I must have my, my family as much as this man here and this man here and this lady, all of you. I don't know your family, but I still stand beside you because the same blood that flows through mine flows through your family. The difference is how my mind was run at home, yours is run differently. But when you come outside and you introduce yourself to me and I introduce myself to you, we're still the same person no matter what. But to get really cheeky about it, if you start interfering with my family and wanting to know what I'm about, or wanting to find out what everything is about me that's wrong, then yeah, that's wrong. Complain of who I am for what I am. Not for what I was or what I had been through. And I've been through a lot. I'm just tired. My spirit wants you guys to listen to us. These are not making trouble by staying here. It's wanting to be left alone to make somebody heal or have somebody come to heal. That tent that I have back here that is called a teepee, by the way, it's so hard to believe that so many people have come. <laughs> I tell you what, we're going like this because it's a real day today. So many people have come to listen to us. And then I, whatever I did, let it be. It's my fault, not yours. I brought this to this point. And have, you, have, you, have, you, have all of you gone to see me what I'm doing and believe now that there's a reason and a way to do it? If it's going to change it, so be it. 
Some sacrifices just like Jesus come to both of you with the earth. But we always listen way at the last. I'm just trying to get you guys to listen now before the last thing. I'm not saying I'm going to go on a suicide mission or anything. I'm doing a suicide mission with my heart for everybody else. That important to see there. That girl was a prodigy. She kept me alive by me, making sure she stays off the drug and she has a new life coming. Just before she got her foot in the door. I tribute this to Shay. I tribute this to her to know that she's done a lot. So did the other one when we did the biographies here. I never asked for this. I did it because they need it. They came out here to ask us what the problem is. We got it. We Now we understand it. The talk's in there. Things may be, being, be put in progress, but it's either way we're going to try, right? Just because this had to be a loud outspoken spot to do it and stand my ground, forgive me. I don't mean no disrespect to any of you, but I do ask one thing. Now you see what we live for, help others. Because we have bad lives, we're not trying to ask for brownie points to go into a good life. We're ready to do this. Who stands with us? <laughs> we need them to live, not die. And we need them to prosper and get better. So your kids can play in the community with any other children they want. And we won't have to worry about our kids disappearing or bad things happening. And the drugs, trust me, it's all coming to an end soon. It'll be all a ball soon. That's what they said. And trust me, I got my own resources. You gotta send your text secretary down a little more. I need no more information. Um, <laughs> I'm for you guys. I hold a secret feather just for who stood here, even the police officers. But hey, I respect you. Sorry for verbal, whatever else it was. But intimidation comes one way. And it has to be truthfully said, not wrongly said. So my, all my relations to you and your family. <laughs> and please, Sagway boys. <laughs> now from my hand, I'm going to lay this single feather down to who owns it. Hi, hi. hi, hi. Uh, whoever owns this blanket, you lost it. You're rich. <laughs> 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 this blanket is now going to be a symbol of whatever we did here today. At least we're leaving here with a good thought. And always, always be honest with each other. My emotions were about somebody who went didn't deserve to die, others who died actually during the time. They could all be here. And this frustration of people bugging and wanting to kick us out that made me lose track. I won't lose track again, and that's when my next gone. And I hope you understand. I'm real. I'm not phony. I'm done being a fish ass. Yeah. Right on, I'm going to give this to her. Right on. And if you ever see her in the community and she's doing something for reasonably, for something good, come stand with her. People of the community stood with me. Whatever comes about this, I hope we can have a sit down again and talk and we'll talk about the good times and the last person who said something that was funny. But I'd rather know you instead of hearing what you remember me for. This lady here is going to carry us on. She's got the heart and she's got the soul to convince me. And I don't mean to put my foot down and say I'm not moving. I wasn't being ignorant. I'm being righteous. I got your attention, didn't I? Sagu it, boys. When the police officers came to move us, I, I made another choice. It may not be a bad one, and it hopefully it turns out good, but I stood my ground. I said I was not moving and I was going to stand. While the standoff continued for hours, a human rights group went to court in an attempt to stop the teardown, claiming the city and police had breached a court order over how encampments have been cleared in recent days. The coalition is arguing that this closure today should not go ahead under Justice Davidson's order because of the risk of harm that could result from exposing folks here living in the encampment to cold weather. They were unsuccessful, saying a provincial judge deferred any move to halt camp teardowns until the group returns to court later this week for their original injunction application. Their next attempt to stop encampment closures citywide. Even if we're successful, they still won't have the housing that they need. They still won't have the safety they need. Whoever knows the person who owns this land, I'll, I'm going to clean it up, I promise. I just, just, it felt comfortable for the people that were here to come in. They felt the healing here. So tell the person who owns it, whoever took the sign down, you'll get it back. We lent it to you, we'll give it back. I just wanted to borrow it just for the healing. <laughs> well, the city of Edmonton land, thank you. I'm not trying to own it. i just grateful that the, the power that comes from this land is lent to us. A lot of people, believe it or not, five out of ten. Three of them left their deal. This is what you call power right here. For, for people who need it to understand it. <clears throat> we are First Nation. This land was never for sale. It was for our, our flourishness and to be better. Let's get it back and we're not taking it from you. We're asking you, you live alongside of it? We're the ones that were here first. Give us the right to be admired by you people knowing that you're still natives here. Right. Ones that are willing to live 
wanting to be somebody and take people with us. So I say, wake up! Wake up! Thank you. Now let the outcome be whatever it is, but hey, Roy Cardo, how you doing? Just want to be a bug, uh, what do you call it? Activist for the right people, not for the wrong. All I said is done. Oh. Hey, hey! Hey, hey! hey. hey. Oh, on As camp residents continued to stand their ground into the early afternoon, an agreement was made with police. Camp resident Ron Cardinal allowing police to clear any garbage and abandoned tents. A bus was nearby, allowing residents to stay warm while giving city crews space to clean up. Cardinal says camp residents and their belongings can stay for now. I'm trying to meet them halfway and meet them to a point where we can have a discussion. I do have a bunch of garbage here. When you guys drive by, you'd like to see this place humbly looking good and then very, very flourish, right? So when they take this garbage out, I promise I'll keep this place neat. In an afternoon press conference, police said providing notice to camp residents of an upcoming eviction is creating risk. Because of this, they are considering other measures, including fencing and upcoming cleanups to keep people away. Some of the booby traps that we've seen in some of the encampments, and those pose real risks, again, to our officers, to the cleanup crew, uh, and I would even say just the general public that may come across an abandoned camp where one of those uh, things may exist. But for Cardinal, he says he will stand his ground as long as it takes. I stood my ground. And I'm going to stay that with you guys. In Edmonton, Laura Kraus, City News. We're going to bring it all down to a level, you guys. We said, yeah, we said, we said. Okay, we're going to, this, this is the idea. Sisters, sisters, sisters. Sister. We need to give all purpose one chance to give a little difference in our little so-called uh, dispute here. He's going to take a look. I allow anybody to look in these tents if they want. It's nothing to hide. If we had something to hide, we would look like we got some purpose for them to come and start bothering us. So we're going to let them look. We're going to back up a little bit and then we're going to discuss with them. By the time you guys drive by here, I promise you, it's going to look like something being done with program. Something's being done for those people. That's what my fight was for. Not just because I want to stay here. Hell, I can go get a hotel room if I want. But I'm not about that. I'm about these people that come here. That tent's had more visitors in the past, like you wouldn't believe, important people, to ask me to do things like this, to tur turn around and watch out for the people. So we're going to watch out for them. And uh, conversation, if you guys just, he feels like it. You feel like your people are in danger, by the way. No, it's not, it's, not safe for, it's not safe for the city workers, right? For the city workers and that too, to try. So you're not gonna, we're not pulling anything on their sleeve. If, if these guys had a good day and said thank you, and they gone in the way you would, we would do this, I would get it done. Yeah. Like, well, are you feeling threatened by any reason? No, I'm not, I'm not feeling threatened, but it's our city partners, right? Yeah. We're here yeah. to offer them some safety and security. Okay. And without us here, they can't do their jobs, right? And with this many people encroaching into the area, they also can't do their jobs. So that's part of the concern right now, right? They feel good about themselves. They're not displacing anybody today. I'll tell you that. They're not displacing nobody. But I want you guys to know that the fight ain't done yet. We're still being what we are. We are the law, the police officers of the law. And if they feel that they're unsafe, why don't we give them what they want to see? Because we were unsafe yeah. when they started pulling up, weren't we? We felt unsafe. We felt like we were about yeah. to have a threat. Yeah. So yeah. let's abolish that right now and let's meet them halfway. They didn't meet us, we met them. And now they're meeting us. So we're, we're kind-hearted, we're, we're respectful, aren't we? Yes, we are. Yeah. Right on. But still stand your ground inside, because I might need you again. Until then, let's give them what he wants. It's about Edmonton's property, I guess. So I'm going to ask you guys to stand down. I don't know, you guys want to go have coffee? We'll, I'll take everybody by half. We'll just, stand, we'll just I'll stand by. I'll do my best for you, but if he wants to do this and he is, he is white shirt, I gotta respect to a point. I gotta respect what he does. He's not, he's not bearing down on me about what's happening. And if anything comes worse to worse, it's all on me now. But you guys don't forget who you are. The great people that came for us here. If this thing works, please, when I call a gathering, do come. We'll dance, we'll play drums properly, and you'll see people, they'll tell you stories about what good I am and how good I am. I believe in you guys. You believe in me. So we'll get these guys their space and I'll walk through a tour with them and everything. If anybody else wants to talk to me, please, I need all the help I can get to get this thing off the ground again. And the people that wandered off from me, what I asked them to, I need to bring them back here because they're still healing. So guess what? We're not stuck. We're now rolling. Okay, thank you guys.
Big Man Camp was there to stay, right? We we were so happy that the the politicians and the police could see that this was a good camp and that and they had compassion. We were we were so happy to see they had compassion. As police work to close the 8th encampment, an injunction hearing on the city's response policy carried on at the courthouse. Amanda Anderson has the details. As the hearing got underway, the justice first extended an emergency interim order until Tuesday, keeping restrictions in place for how the city and police dismantle eight high-risk encampments. The city and EPS's encampment policy is otherwise unaffected. It only provides certain protections, procedural protections to the eight encampments identified in Justice Davidson's order. Some requirements outlined in the order are that adequate shelter space be available, specific risk factors be present, and advance notice be given. The type of restrictions the Coalition for Justice and Human Rights lawyer says the injunction would cover for all encampments moving forward. Until the court has made a final determination on the coalition's lawsuit, which seeks declaratory relief, sorry, legalese, seeks a declaration from the court that the encampment eviction policy breaches people's charter rights in various ways. Lawyers for the city were first to present applications. They're arguing the coalition does not have public interest standing. In a statement, the city says in part, the organization making the claim is not in a position to legally represent the interests of unsheltered Edmontonians in a lengthy court process. City lawyers argue the coalition does not have the expertise, connection to the houseless or resources. Chris Weeb calls it strategic. People living in encampments in Edmonton for various reasons are unable to bring this legal action on their own. They require a public interest litigant. The coalition is well suited to be that public interest litigant. He believes few social agencies would want to be directly involved in this kind of legal matter. Many of them would be acting against their self-interest in bringing this legal action against government uh, when the government funds, at least in part, their operations. The coalition will get a chance to present its submissions Thursday. Amanda Anderson, CTV News, Edmonton. Yeah, I know. Everything was happy. It was beautiful. We're all sitting around, and it's late, and all the campers are settled in their tents, and everything's great. We're, we're having a peaceful fire and a smudge. Max and I are standing beside each other. Why is he smoking me? And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I look up. I hope you're... But no, yeah. all he was doing is he had the camera in the cop's face, and the second he was around the vehicle, oh, then man. Red Pot Red jumped out of the vehicle. She's got the phone, his phone, yeah. so... Yeah, and then she punched him. And, yeah. Dude, somebody Who had a... Somebody had... His wife does. Okay, because it's... Some, he somebody was had an altercation with the cops and then ran over here, jumped in the car, and drove away. I'm looking over to my into over to my right here, and I see this guy. I have no idea who he is. Nobody I've seen at all. Nobody from the camp. Just some outsider, and he's yelling at the police. Somebody came up out of nowhere, harassed the cops there, ran over, jumped in the car, drove away. The cops were chasing him that way, and then the gentleman, like the the, the guy the who they just chased somehow ended up in an altercation and like I don't it was I was just coming around I How pretty much you guys didn't go this far man <clears throat> but somebody out somebody from outside came in harassed them and then ran that way and I'm like dude I'm like Max look at that guy and he fucking he literally runs r jumps in the car right away and drives away okay, the city of Edmonton is leaving right now look at all the fucking cops bro Get the fuck! There's like these uh, al this. alien sighting, and, and I go to Max. Max, I'm like, oh, look at this guy! Do you see that? Do you see that? This guy. Well, this guy runs to his car, gets in, and starts to drive away. There's like a million cop cars. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27 police cars. 27. 27. 20, 27 fucking police cars. 
Like, look at that. Wow, isn't that insane? Apparently what happened was his wife got pushed over the cops and he went up to the cops and said, what the hell, man? Why'd you push my wife, dude? And he's got his phone up and the cop punches him and they started arresting them. He didn't do anything wrong. What's He's up? leaving. What's up? He's leaving. He didn't do anything wrong. No, I know that. We're not trying to stop him. Why are you following him? Oh my God, he just hey, buddy! Me. Did you just touch my? Oh, punch me! Are you gonna punch me? Don't touch! Don't punch me! Grab me! Don't. You assaulted my wife. You assaulted my wife on camera. On camera, buddy. Two cameras. Let him punch me in the face. Let him go. Cause you're under arrest for assault. I didn't assault assault you. you grabbed me. He's grab filming you. He hey, grab me. He's got a right to film you. Okay. On the ground, your force will be used. Get down. Get down. Why? Okay. Why? Face down. And I and I wasn't sure who it was until I completely come around the vehicle with my camera, and I'm like, oh no, not that guy. Get the fuck off! He can't fucking read! You have a camera! You're gonna fucking kill him! You're responsible! You're responsible! I'm getting two heat because you're fucking close! I'm you on camera, you fucking moron! I have to look at you though! Enjoy being on the mute! Are you out of your fucking mind? I hope you all leave your fucking job. I hope you get to live on the streets. Oh, you piece of shit. You fucking You made an agreement with you. This is what you do. Do you watch the lights in the black room? Come with me. No, you guys are assaulting your woman. You're assaulting him. Grabbing me. If you hit me again, if you hit me again, I'm going to charge you with assault. You're not touching. Do not touch me. Do you understand? Stay back. Put it down. This guy feels tough. Fucking tough guy. That guy's like unconscious. Why does he need medical attention? Somebody came up and pushed a cop and then ran away. It wasn't even that guy. More coming to you guys in your face! You're wearing our resistance! You're wearing our You fucking traitors! <clears throat> now it's war! You see a time about this? Oh no. <laughs> this guy was so nice. This kid was so nice. Like I I'm like, what the hell's going on? There's chaos. Chaos erupts. Absolutely erupts. so fucking terrifying. Why would they do that? Why would an outside instigator come in and cause trouble with the police after the after a deal was made? Yeah, you know what the, the chief of police did today? <sighs> 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 I can my leg. Fucking leg. Oh. You guys all have that duty. Oh, 
fuck? I was literally just standing here. This is fucking unreal. He could be your class. He could be your ugly. It fucking just shakes me up, man. Is that how quick you are on the job? To take the first person they can nail? That shit dies. I don't even know what they, they've arrested him for. I don't they know. refuse to say. Oh, I know. Really well, fucking, uh. Telling everybody to back up that big pull out the taser on that dead kid. I didn't want to do anything to ever hurt nobody or anything like that. All I wanted to do was keep this program going. I'm sorry, man. It came to this. That was on call for justifiably wrong what they did. When the fuck when the cops were the, when the, when the papers were gone, they did this. When they were gone, they did this. I followed them. I seen the video. That happening was a total setup. In this place, what they're doing, it's going to be blamed on us. I'll never forget that night meeting Olive and Cameron in the in the teepee. Big man invited me in. This is where this is when he gifted me the this violin right here. I bless you as an honorable Indian and a member of the Big Man Clan. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> and there was people from the community bringing donations all night. Like this has been on the news all day. And it was beautiful all through the night into the darkness, the deep darkness. People were bringing donations, clothing, and just food, and oh, it was incredible. It, was, it should never happen that way. What I did here was for the people that were out in the cold, for the people that were... You did a really good job. Thank you, and I hope, I'm yeah. trying real hard to tell myself that this kid didn't deserve that, and that it's going to come about to be something done about it. But, but you know what? These guys were looking for that fight they all were, day. They were, they but were they looking they for were an looking opportunity. For so it's, there's nothing you can do. There's nothing you can do. At a certain point, these guys are going to pick someone, pick a thing, yeah. instigate, and that's what's going to happen. Here. <laughs> Oh, no, no, you're okay, you're okay. Oh, sit down, you guys are okay, sit down, both of you. And so, yeah, there's, there's <laughs> <laughs> really nothing. <coughs> so I thank you, I, I'm so sorry that even that event even came up to what it was. Was there any remarks said to the officer in re regards to why he followed you guys that way? Uh, he said he wasn't. I'm not. I'm he not. was directly following you, there's no way you can't see that. Yeah. I think, I don't know. In the camera, he shows himself smiling. Exactly. They're yeah. all smiling. All of them smirking. And, yeah, I think they're just ready to, well, he gave they're cold, news. they're hungry, he and they're ready to He gave breaking news right away to, the, to what's his name, to shoot on? Jeremy. Jeremy. And not giving it to anybody else or anything. So, if Jeremy is totally on his side, we'll find out the, the situation yeah, at hand with that. I, because I, he really did go on the... We're Jeremy. broadcasting right now. Yeah. And two of them just came just before you got here with the lights and the camera and all that. And then you mm -hmm. packed up and left. So. Yeah, they didn't talk to anyone, I don't think. No. It's almost like they don't actually care about your opinions. Exactly. No, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, it's, yeah. But I'm remarkably persuasive. <laughs> okay, higher ground every Tuesday. Oh, no, none of the cameras are working. <laughs> so they're all cold and batteries are dead. Yeah, providing hot food and clothing. Lots of donations have come in. The the camp had raised so much support that day that man, it it was just so beautiful. I remember Max and I were driving home that night. We were so happy, so proud, like, oh, yes. Like, the power of cameras, the power of action, the power of, of calling people out, you know. Like, the people can win. The people can win. We were so happy that they were able to stay. We, we just, yeah, man, we celebrated. And we, we were like on cloud nine driving home that night. It was beautiful, man. Like, we were so stressed. We were so stressed for days that the police were going to kick him out that that night we went home just like, yes, finally, something good. It wasn't until really very late. It was probably about 1 in the morning.
when I seen a global news report saying that the police were definitely coming back. This is the eighth and final high-risk encampment set to be dismantled. There must be 48 hours notice, and there needs to be enough shelter space for the people who are being displaced. Many people aren't willing to go to shelters. There are rules, and there are, there are things that people need to abide by when they're using the shelter system. And in a lot of cases, they're not willing to do that. By mid-afternoon, police and residents came to an agreement. They have agreed to take away the structures that aren't being occupied currently. A bus also arrived so people could warm up after being out in the cold for hours. You guys trusted me this far. Trust me a little further. Come on, I'm going to go on that bus and you guys can keep warm. Police stress this is only a delay. We're going to continue doing our job. Efforts to clear this site will still be made. It's just not clear when. Now we have to consider, do people get arrested out of there? And that's not where we want to go with this. But at the same time, you know, we're going to have to look at how do we approach these in the future. Cardinal stresses this camp isn't like other camps and hopes the city and police see that. It's cold like this, do you know how to sweep us under the rug? So listen to me, everybody, please. Stand your ground. Sarah Khan Medina, Global News. So I was supposed to go to a protest at the courthouse the next day. As we enter a deep freeze, this morning's protest was smaller than it may otherwise have been, but this cold weather only reinforces the protesters' message that housing is a human right. Housing, health care, anything but warfare. Carrying signs with messages like stop the sweeps and fight poverty, not the poor, a small group of hardy protesters held a rally on the steps of police headquarters. They say kicking people out of their tents and dismantling encampments is traumatic and largely pointless as most residents simply set up somewhere else rather than going to shelters with available spaces. Many in attendance have been there as police and city crews dismantled seven camps deemed high risk over the last two weeks. Police and city officials say the camps are dangerous, unsanitary, and a major fire risk. The police like to villainize them and say they're the problem. No, society is the problem that leaves our most vulnerable with mental health on the street to fend for themselves. Emotions among advocates were heightened yesterday after a Bear Claw volunteer was arrested at the remaining high-risk camp on Roland Road. You can hear a taser being charged multiple times in the mayhem of the arrest. Police say that taser was never actually fired. With one demonstration over, the protesters' work continues. They plan to go back to that camp on Roland Road. They believe the people who were allowed to stay in their tents last night will be forced to leave today. Jeremy Thompson, CTV News, Edmonton. And I, and, I, and I didn't sleep. Like, I, I was sleeping, like, two hours a night through this whole entire shoot, okay? Like, I was literally sleeping a couple hours a night, maybe two, three hours. It was, it was, it was insane, the amount of research and just, like, the writing. I, I wrote this, wrote so much, and I'm, I'm probably not even going to be able to say half of it. Okay. So. We've... We've talked about how we've talked about how Max and I set out to do a documentary on the homeless encampments and the homeless situation. We wanted to bring to light that the this affordability crisis in Canada has forced thousands of people onto the streets. There it's been so many factors leading up to this. The, the funding of shelters in small towns. So all the small towns around the cities like Edmonton, for example, here, all those shelters have shut down. The, 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 the cutbacks in mental health care have put people on the streets. There was, there was good people there. Like Earth was there. Right? I'll never forget. And two guns showed up again. Good, man. Good. <laughs> That's fucking dope. Why so much resources and effort is going into tearing down homeless encampments instead of mental health and drug rehabilitation? Like, or even like a fraction of, a fraction of the money they, they put into tearing all these camps down could could go to keeping these places safe
<laughs> it's so it, it's 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 ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. The point of this this film is I hope everybody learns from their mistakes. Okay? I'm telling you the honest and god truth of what I saw and how I feel. Okay? There's going to be some people who are going to be upset with me over this film. I know it. I don't care. It's not my job to make you feel comfortable. Yeah, the spirits are blessing them. I'm in, I'm in the TP that morning with big man, two guns, two guns wife. My heart is the best thing that I know and it kept me going. My life alone knows that I only understand. But what I do have is this beat that was given and it's ongoing. My people understood something. They show me the freedom of my spirit and show me the love for the land. As the waters would flow and the grass would grow, my spirit is supposed to dance as long as the grass is green. And my life is to be beautiful as long as the sky is blue. If I'm not here with you, then where am I really? Am I really a life that believes it's coming to be true? Or am I somebody dying? And the spirit comes to you and be sit still. You always listen to him first. Why? Because he'll give you the revealing of that. Not even I can tell you. But then if you keep on dancing, you'll see. You'll make him dance with you. With you. Oh, she said. Hey, 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 oh! Okay. So we're in the tent. Earth comes in and sings a beautiful, beautiful song. And I, and I love hearing her sing. Uh, and two guns is drumming and she's singing. It's beautiful. Everything was so peaceful. There was no talk of violence or, you know, or anything. We were not really expecting the police to show up. There was like a, a like there was like a unsettling like oh god maybe but if we could just make it like it's already like noon hour right like if they're not here yet they sh they really shouldn't be coming and we're we're walking around the perimeter and checking in there's always cops driving by and checking things and um you know and so today was just no was no different the same thing cops driving by checking it out oh. Oh. Whatever. There was a cops parked over there. There's a paddy wagon parked over there. So we were like getting a little scared. Like, oh shoot, like they're they they're probably coming. But we were have we had faith that the deal made would stick. That was beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Was I thought I knew, but um no. Just kind of like brain fart. I feel like there. we're having a sweat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's it's cool. Sorry. Warm enough for you. Yeah, it's gotta stay warm. It's so cold out there. Yeah, no. cops are here. Well, Seriously, let them man. Try to come and take people out of their. They're here. They're here, yeah. When people huh? are drumming. They're here, yeah. Like, okay, let me get my shoes on. We'll do this right after this. Let me see. Touch me, shoes. I have to have my shoes on. Yep. Yep. My belt. My hoodie. My belt. My hoodie. The cops show up, and. They start taping off the perimeter, the whole, the both properties. They, they've never done this before. They don't. They never taped up the perimeter before, so that the press couldn't 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 see. People couldn't see what was going on in, inside of this takedown. They they come. They they start taping up the whole perimeter, anyways. And we're like, oh yeah, they're coming. Well, the cops are here taping everything up, and uh, looks like they're meaning business. 
Uh, I heard on the news last night they were going to arrest people if that, if they had to. So just to be aware, they're fully willing to do that. Huh. Anyone probably inside the yellow tape is going to be at risk, I assume, right? I remember just going into the tent saying, oh man, big man, they're taping up the perimeter. Like, they're coming, man. This, they mean business today. And uh, Big Man was like, nope, that's okay. He was still peaceful. Yeah, brother, I got, I got you. Completely peaceful. There was no talk of fighting back or violence or anything like that. Just standing your ground. That's all they were, were doing was standing their ground. Yeah. Yeah, quite a big, but I'd say quite almost a little bit bigger, bigger of a force that was here yesterday morning. There's that bus again, ETS, paddy wagon, of course, ready to go. Anyways, fuck. I'm, I'm shooting a documentary. I'm just gonna put it in here. We've been here. I come with all traditional and all rules of our people and how to stand and confront you today. I ask you to honor this as you see the young man standing beside you here. There's one that's injured. Does anybody have recognition for that at all from your people? I saw the video. If you want to know what a fair fight is, I stick to my rules and stick to yours. We can't keep getting pushed around, mister. Uh, excuse me, what's your name, sir? Riley? This is Mr. Dryland. I'm pretty sure you know when it's the end of all causes to come to an end with bullshit. This bullshit we have here, not much of a fight, but guess what? You got a big squad. What makes you think I'm going to back down from my right as an Indian native? Tell me. I know you're going to feel sorry for me when you do what you got to do. Don't care, do I? Roy, we're here today to discuss with you, as we did yesterday, that we need to take this structure down, right? We have a warm bus like we did yesterday to offer all you folks a place to go, a warm ride to where you need to go. Well, well, it it worked the first go, time. So it worked the first time. Go. It's not working like that again. So you gave my people and my friends a scare. What's supposed to be a peaceful protest turned into a fucking pretty stupid one because somebody decided to do it on your side to make eruption crack. Now it cracked. So we're gonna here's the here's That's, the choices. That's what's the problem here? Right. That's not supposed to be allowed. You say we're allowed to sit on the bus for it. There ain't gonna be no bus. Now, they bought that bus? No. Can I get a bed in there? Can I get a kitchen? No. Okay, listen. You see my fight? Please understand me. This is your option. I can listen, We're but I'm not gonna hear you. We're gonna tell you this one time. Good. The option is this. You can leave peacefully, or you will be forcibly removed. If you do not leave, your captains will be cleaned up no matter what, and you can be arrested for obstruction. You wanna play checkers, or you wanna play chess? Do you understand? Do you see the look in my eye, ma'am? You 51 years old, had enough of you people. Okay. Done a lot for you guys. So that's Stood my ground and tried to make myself a man. Now You've you got a warrior. You can take it or leave it, but this is happening. You go feathers up, boys. Okay. You go get ready. You will go get ready. Actually, ready. we don't need to get ready. We're ready. Nobody's going to be grabbing me if you're afraid to fight, man. Leave. <laughs> 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 There's kids in that tent, guys. There's kids in the tent. There's kids in the tent. Guys, there's kids in that tent, okay? Right there. There's kids in that tent, okay? Watch out, guys. There's
Are they still in there? Yeah? For fuck's sake. Behind the tank! Meeting us! I'm, 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 I'm here behind to help. The I won't. He's got behind the tank. Get out. All right. Behind the tank. Right now. Behind the tank. I'm going. I'm going. And these cops had one job, and that was to take them down. Fuck. What the fuck? Fucking goons. Oh, look at. Where's the kids? Fucking loser. Fucking assault us? How can he collect? How can he collect his stuff from this side of the tape? Man, these people lived there for months and months and months. All of their belongings, possessions were there. The community had donated so much, and all they did was throw it all away. I need help walking! I know! It hurts though! Where's, where's the, where's the girls? Where's the, where's, where are your kids? They're in there They'll still. They'll be arrested. There's three children in there, please. Can you priority them, number one? There's three kids there in that bed. children. They're, they're young. Yeah, in, where the fire was, they were there. They're, no, they're they're with somebody. Somebody. Who, 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 Remember that when you kiss your kids tonight. Remember that when you tell your kids what you do. options either you're gonna go to an institution meaning a, sh a shelter which is complete garbage or like rehab or, or jail that was your options right some freaking options <laughs> I, like I said, Roy, if somehow you, uh, your stuff, I can put it in my van, okay? We can figure that out somehow. Fucking warriors. Look, there, they got the paddy wagon from around the corner. We knew where you were the whole time, dumb fuck. Huh? He's done there. Oh. Those are pieces of shit. Oh, Fucking roof. Take care, buddy. The only people who could go on the warming bus 
or people who are going to uh, this triage center or a shelter or something. You were searched. Your bags were searched and you were patted down on the way in. Huh. That's, that's humane? Come on. And this is how inhumane this really is. You know? It's, it's got to be a better way. You know? This is just not the way to do it. Sign the treaty of long term going to say maintain your way of life. That means at that point in time we thought we'd live in teepees still. Why can't we still live outside? Exactly. It's my right as a fucking Indian. What, what are you gonna do now? Guy asked, I'm gonna go to the bush. Find somewhere else to set up, eh? I'm gonna go put up a big ass teepee! Real big teeth in your legislative ground when they sign that down treaty. I hope every one of you is very proud of yourself. And I hope your grandparents are looking down at you smiling. I bet you they're very proud. How long were you living here for? Three months? Yeah. Need, we don't need to do anything here. Uh, they say it's a high risk. You know, there's, there's no violence here. Nobody steals. We're, we have a good rapport with the rest of the community. There should be no reason for this. Oh, and Chad. How are you, bro? Oh, I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do now. Fuck. They, they haven't said nothing about anything. They like, no shelter or nothing. Like, even still, what they're the fuck is that? They're, they're, they're trying to say they want to take us to a shelter, but is uh, that guaranteed? How does that work, though? Us. Like, look at all the stuff that I have. Like, till when? Like, till, till tomorrow morning or something? Yeah, pretty much. Like, right? should I have? Is that how it works? Uh, so. How come the, the cop is standing okay. at the door? Only if you want to go to a shelter now. It's supposed to be a warming bus, but now it's only if you want to go to a shelter. Really? Yep, that's, that's what, what they said. They said there's a, warm, a warming, warming bus. bus yep. there. But now yep. it's only if they're I got proof. Why the cops standing there? What if? Yep. <sighs> and they'll they're gonna search everybody who gets on that bus. Oh wow. Is anyone on it? There's, I don't know. Oh, I'm not sure. There was a couple, but okay. it's just my mom. Oh. It's on a warming bus. Yeah. Fuck. It's such a fucking joke. Hey, how you doing? Good. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Yeah.
Disrespected us, and they disrespected our culture, and they disrespected that young man. And, and as far as I'm concerned, every indigenous person in this country, you know, they're, they're out of line. We're, we're peaceful. We're, there's no u need to use violence and touch these sacred items. They, they should not. They should not have done that. What they did, you know. I don't know who's evil. How, how old that eagle fan was, but those officers broke that. And you don't break the, things like that. You know, you respect things like that. Yesterday, I, big man negotiated a deal with the police that said these tents were going to stay. That didn't happen. How did that make a deal? Like they lied to us, because they did. And, and we knew as soon as they, as soon as they said, yo, if you do this, We'll let you do that. We knew they were lying from the moment it happened. We were prepared for this. You know, because they don't want us to be free. Me, Bert, man, I'm a big man. We sat down at that fire destroyer. We sat down at that fire, and we were peaceful about it. And we got lied to. Just like they lied to us when they signed that treaty. They said, maintain our way of life as we see fit. Can I hunt down here? Can I fit? Can I go trap down here? No? If I put up the TV somewhere, what happened? They take it down. They take everything from me. Send me to jail. I've been in jail for lots of things. And, and going to jail for living? I think that's unacceptable. Can we go? I don't know, but go to the bush. I don't know. Before they came in today, did they say anything about the deal they negotiated yesterday? No, they said yesterday. Oh, to talk to housing workers. Um, I don't know how talking to a housing worker <coughs> and one day, you know what? Cool. So we got to keep our tent uh, one extra day? Like, what is that? I, I don't understand. They said, we talk to the workers till they stay. We talked to them, you know? And then they come here today, locked us in. Look, you see the big, the big police came up us like they locked us in. They came here by force with I don't know how many officers you think it is. <laughs> they broke that leg. Oh, they broke the leg. Yeah, look at she's there. Look at she's. Look at they broke that one's leg. Earth. Where's that? Came home. I I I was just so shaken up. So. Just so traumatized. By what I had just seen. Mayor Amarjeet So he is expected to declare a homelessness emergency in our city this afternoon. Last week, he admitted clearing eight encampments deemed high risk may not be in line with the city's commitments to reconciliation. The mayor of Edmonton will be declaring a homeless emergency today. It's a move that appears to be supported by the federal government, but an Alberta minister is calling Sohi's plan a bizarre political stunt. Another advocacy group says declaring an emergency is necessary to help those most in danger in the winter months. It really is, is life and death kind of conditions that people are trying to get through with far too few supports or, or resources available to them. In an interview Friday, Jason Nixon, the provincial minister of seniors, community and social services, says he will not be attending the mayor's emergency meeting, saying he has no interest in playing political games. The city of Edmonton is declaring a housing and homelessness emergency. On Tuesday afternoon, the motion passed 9-4 to four after a contentious and at times passionate debate. The next day, I... Um... The next day I go to the camp 
and it's completely cleared out. All right, guys, here we are back at Big Man Camp, and you can see everything's gone. All the donations, people, after being on the news yesterday, people, there's an outpouring of donations, people with firewood and food and water. Here's where the once teepee stood right here. Big man's teepee stood right here. Fucking look at this, they leave they they leave uh, all the spikes in the ground like that's not uh, dangerous or anything, you know? All these spikes in the ground still. You can see spikes, spikes, spikes. This is the warm, it was warm ground. See, you can see how the how it was splitting here. This is basically where he slept, right there. You could tell, you can see how it was warm ground. I'm proud of everyone you be fighting. If I had any problems, the same as you guys deserve a standing ovation yourself. So, I leaned off you guys and you guys stopped me. That was so easy. Let's go in here and lean off you guys. Seriously. Oh, absolutely. Many uh, people are seeing the video and images out of Edmonton, the police uh, physically removing some people, many of them indigenous from these camps. Uh, what are your thoughts on what's happening? Yeah, so we've got to take it back a little bit and, and uh, take a look at why we have the encampments in the first place. And of course, most people will know that shelter, uh, shelters, housing, and mental health and addictions are all provincial responsibilities. So on the city level, what we have to look at is, are encampments safe? And are they uh, fit for human habitation? And uh, for the most part, that's generally been yes. But sometimes EPS, our Edmonton Police Services, will come to us and say, we've got these specific concerns, or our firefighters will come and say, we've got these specific concerns. And if it's deemed high risk, as in people are literally in danger, uh, then they can go and uh, remove these encampments. And then the city, uh, our role uh, is simply to just go and clean up. Because as you may or may not know, municipalities do not direct um, our police services. Uh, the daytime high in Edmonton over the next few days is hovering around the, the minus 30 mark. That's not with uh, including the wind chill. Uh, where are all of these people going to go? Well, that's the question, isn't it? Um, so the province has provided 1,700 uh, shelter spaces, um, but we know that our homeless count is larger than that. Uh, there are also uh, empty spots in these uh, shelter spaces, and and uh, so the question is why? Why are these there are these empty spots? Why would people rather risk being outside in this extreme weather uh, than go to a shelter space? And so, as a result of that, the city actually drafted minimum shelter standards for the province to follow that would actually increase people's willingness to go to shelter spaces. Um, as of yet, those standards have not been uh, instituted or employed. Four councillors voted against the declaration of an emergency. Sarah Hamilton, Tim Cartmel, Karen Principe and Aaron Paquette. The continuation of the special council meeting saw another busy gallery. After the vote passed, emotions flowed. They know, they understand the human tragedy that is going on with our people dying every day. As for how the city will act on this newly declared emergency, that's not clear, says Councillor Paquette. While the province's meeting was happening across the street at the law courts, a lawsuit and injunction request against the city's encampment in response policy was thrown out. Amanda Anderson reports. 
after a few days to deliberate, a justice decided the Coalition for Justice and Human Rights was not suited to represent Edmonton's homeless. Disappointment. Uh, this is not what we were hoping for. The coalition wanted a permanent injunction, putting restrictions on how and when homeless encampments are dismantled. Last week, the city filed an application arguing the coalition should not be given public interest standing. The judge agreed. Avnish Nanda, a lawyer for the coalition, says without standing, the injunction and lawsuit cannot move forward. Uh, that means that thousands of houseless people in the city who are subject, in our view, and as the evidence outlined, significant harms from the city's own policy will not have their day in court. While pleased with the decision, in a statement, the city says in part, our response to this legal action is no way intended to diminish the city of Edmonton's concern and dedication to ensuring the safety of our unhoused residents and the well-being of our communities. Jeffrey Westman represents Edmonton's police chief. The reason that the chief wanted to intervene in this case is that he wanted to show the public the very deep, meaningful, thoughtful ways that our police officers engage with vulnerable persons every day. And I think that that was done. Though not as full as Monday, a large number of advocates, activists, and people with lived experience on the streets once again came to council chambers to hear the debate. The latter part of 2023 was this winter saw 18 amputations. It is by far the single biggest issue our city has been grappling with. So if this is not an emergency, I don't know what it is. Levinson has a new approach to get the vulnerable out of tents and into safer living situations. And it means homeless camps will no longer be tolerated. The province, in collaboration with the city, police and First Nations, have opened a new hub downtown. It's meant to pair people with the services they need. Jeremy Thompson has the details. So everyone's guaranteed two of these. A safe place to store belongings, showers, bathrooms, a warm place to sleep. Comforts politicians and police believe will entice people off of the streets. I'm excited about this. Is it perfect? No. Is it a heck of a lot better than we had yesterday? Yes. With the lawsuit against the city's encampment response dismissed, the police chief says camps will no longer be tolerated. Along with weather, fire and hygiene concerns, Public Safety Minister Mike Ellis says camp residents are targets for drug dealing, violence, human trafficking and sexual assault. We are trying to protect them from being preyed upon by organized crime, by red alert, by other gangs. As more camps are cleared, residents will now have the option to come here on warming buses, a navigation center downtown with staff ready to connect them to existing services, including shelters, health care, addictions, housing, income and cultural supports. We actually are getting the supports that we need to heal our people, to reignite that spirit. We're at the table to assist in, in finding those resolutions. One day after council declared a housing and homelessness emergency, there is optimism at City Hall. Connecting folks to services has always been a gap. There will be some who refuse the help, wary of a shelter system they see as institutional and unsafe. Community and Social Services Minister Jason Nixon says shelter standards have changed. They're open around the clock, include cultural training and provide different options for different needs, to name a few. Uh, our shelter providers have responded in a very big way uh, to be able to make sure they continue to do shelter different. It's a $13 million effort. Once the worst of winter is over, the province will review how it went. Jeremy Thompson, CTV News, Edmonton. The dismantling of encampments was also a point of contention at the first police commission meeting of the year. Protesters shouted, making sure their concerns were front and center. David Owasik was there. There is not one who can argue any degree of credibility that a tent is a solution for the challenges we face in our city. A few moments after he said those words, and in the midst of Chief Dale McPhee's first speech of the year to Edmonton's police commission, yeah, you're not mine either. He was cut off by a group of public speakers turned protesters. You work for us. You are a civilian You work for us. We are civilians. That is a sworn member. Talk about gangs, they're right there. Some had asked earlier for his resignation. All who came and spoke, nine people in total, took issue with the encampment teardowns. This one told the commission of her concerns about police conduct she claimed to have encountered at one site. I am not Indigenous. The very first time I go over with an Indigenous person um, that there were no cameras rolling, the police officer pushes the girl that I, that I go over with. I was with her. I saw it, started filming right after the arrest. Um, 
there is a racism issue. Edmonton's chief of police says he has no concerns about claims like that. I think uh, from everything I've seen is our members acted with great professionalism. Uh, is there hot tempers in some of these things in relation to feeling strongly and opposed? Yes, there is, and there's going to be. It's, it's a difficult situation. When asked if there should have been an emergency police commission meeting long before this week, a current committee member and former chair said this. Uh, there's been some light communication, but again, you have to appreciate it. It was Christmas holidays, everybody's away, council's away, officers are on vacation, members of our commission are on vacation. We're all volunteers. An explanation that may not sit well with the groups who have now come to City Hall three times this week to protest encampment policies. David Awasik, CTV News, Edmonton. There is a lot of people who are homeless and we have nothing for them to go to. We don't have homes, we don't have shelters, we don't have the supports even to get them to these shelters and homes. The UCB government could right now. They've got a $5.5 billion surplus. They could be investing in affordable housing. They could be investing in permanent supportive housing, which we know saves money and saves lives. Homer Trust Edmonton indicates there are about 3,000 homeless people in the city right now. 670 of those individuals are believed to be unsheltered. Edmonton has about 1,100 emergency shelter spaces right now. The province says it's provided enough funding to increase that number to 1,700 early this year. Edmonton Mayor Sohi declared a homelessness an affordability, or sorry, homeless and housing crisis because we are in a crisis. And, and the province isn't doing anything but gaslighting. And here we are, you can see the entire perimeter is completely fenced in. No, not even the public can use it. All right. So all the neighbors uh, complain they can't use their park or their field here. Guess what? <laughs> I still can't use it. Now nobody can use it. So if you remember, there was signs here that said City of Edmonton land, affordable land or affordable housing or something. And then there was the tents. Right? Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's you ever breached it either. But yeah. There's where the TP once sat. Ever since we've just been trying to help trying to find everybody. You know, we like we help. We were helping May and Arlen with food and water and stuff and propane, and we we ended up getting all of their stuff. Like next time, they were, the cops came, and I remember the, the the police promised us they would take care of them and find them a good spot, and they would try their best to get them in a place they could be together. And we didn't hear from them for days. Everybody was safe together. This is my point, man. When we knew them, they were all helping each other. They were all off drugs. They were all off drinking. They were all comfortable, safe, warm, like just safe and stable. And now everything's gone to shit. They're all fucked. We went, we did go, we did go up to see Big Man at his sister's place. We jammed and met his beautiful family and his son. <laughs> some cool, some cool kids there, you know? 
Everybody knows that you should protect what's yours and the right that you earned it by any kind of labor that you had to use in force of your own muscles, of your own body weight or anything like that. All the consequences of you working or doing anything for yourself is your pride and joy of your achievement. Out there on the streets, people don't have that. They have to work. They have to do things for themselves. They have to make the rest of the day work so that the evening can be survival if it's winter or if it's fall. Summertime, they don't care. A piece of blanket and a pillow is good enough for them. But out there, they don't have no problems. Now they do. The police services of Edmonton, Edmonton's so-called government itself, City Hall, they all did one thing wrong. They stopped caring for them. Now they're taking us like we're a bunch of cockroaches or we seem to be the problem of the city's problems. And I had one local area talk good about us, Chinatown. Said since the Camptations have been up and moving around and doing the best they can to keep out of their way and everything, the crime rate went down in their area. And another source says that the crime rate, crime rate went, went up, but I think the insurance likes to collect that stuff, don't we now, individual? Because you don't get nine windows broken from somebody that comes from a captation. You just don't. We, 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 we trust ourselves to be out there and to do things right for ourselves and to abide by others around us. That's the only reason why we're out there. We're not out there to be vigilantes like somewhat of different individuals that have these problems. And they are individuals because these individuals get caught sooner or later. The law seems to believe that they got them all. Well, if you got them all, then why are you saying that people that live peaceful or even sober camps or camps that have medicine bundles or camps that have programs, why do you say that they're the problems? I haven't had one problem in my camp. If you look at my record, my streak of it, the individuals that I stayed with and that I worked with, and I'm not even a certified counselor. Let me tell you something, at least I try. Individuals came to me, I have successes out there that say that because of me, they're grateful that they didn't fall into that life of drugs. I have other people out there that tell me that I'm doing pretty good for myself and I'm not trying to make trouble for myself or anything, but if you look at what I do for a living, I don't do nothing but except watch people try to have the best life they can. I've found bodies, I've found people dead because of their drugs. My sister, my, my, my niece, all of them, I backed them up. What I went through with this whole holocaust of the so-called taking this campation, this camp down and everything where I was at, we had a zone of pure respect. We had a zone from the community of respect. We had everybody even down from us had respect. And then suddenly a bunch of criminals came up to be manifested and seemed to be running to my camp and getting in trouble. Seems to be, oh yeah, we saw them go here. We see them go right to that camp. Well, you didn't catch nobody, did you? So how could it be in my camp? Why do you got to use extra artillery to take me down and me helping people? I'm not anybody else except an activist of the right kind. I'm an Aboriginal. I'm from Lac La Biche, Alberta. My great Muslim, he would tell you the same. Watch your step because I'll catch it if you don't catch it. And that's what I do. I help people. I don't, I don't consider myself a drunk. I don't consider myself a parasite. I don't consider myself a cockroach. If you want to know what life is about, look above you, man. He's real. He lives there. You ask him something properly, respectfully, sincerely, he'll answer you. He doesn't hide. He doesn't tell you, I'll be right back. Let me take a message like City Hall does. Well, City Hall says that they got no more, no more, what do you call it, uh, funding. I put $5 and somewhat change on the table to try my best to let them know, we'll help you since you're helping them and I'm part of it. I'll help you. What did they do? They still think it's the most funniest thing ever done. But isn't it the most embarrassing thing ever? To know that I can give back money on a table at City Hall's, so-called City Hall's uh, the dome of where you sit and you listen to them when they're talking, you bring up other artillery. Well, you know what? When you said the adults were coming to the meeting to get things done and get it done now, well, I guess I did come. The rest of them were kids ready to play again. Everybody's employment seems to be more important. Everybody's seat seems to be more important. And you're going to get one thing from all of us, a fight. They're, they're walking and roaming the streets without anywhere to go. Fucking no, there's just no happy ending here. There's, there's just not no happy ending here.
Yeah.